Welcome to the Everyone's a Critic movie review podcast for Patreon supporters only. This is the first one that we're going to release as to everyone. Otherwise, we'll give them to just to our Patreon supporters. They're just kind of fun throwaway shows that should be fun, and they'll get to help direct, I guess. I, I feel like a uh, disclaimer uh, that uh, Flickchart does not know that we do this. They don't pay us to do this. No. <laughs> they have nothing to do with this other than we found their website and we like what they do. And so we're doing this, you know, because we want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although they, if they would like to support us, they're more than welcome to. Oh, absolutely. And I'll yeah. be sure to tweet this at them. I never even thought sure. of that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is kind of, it'll be a fun, and we're going to try to maybe throw a movie in here once in a while uh, if you guys have your own suggestions. But it's really to help grow the Patreon base. We want to grow this podcast, and in order to do that, we need the Patreon supporters, to that base to grow as well. And we want to kind of create a community where there's, similar to other podcasts who've done a really good job of that. We I feel like we have a small one going uh, with Uncle Jeff and Jason from Mexico and Corey, Josh, and uh, just uh, several other people, uh, but we'd like to see it even grow further. So, and uh, we've got to give credit to our movie star Dave Sievers, who actually conceived of this idea. He uh, yeah. told me that uh, he would like us to see he'd like to see us do an entire episode uh, with Flickchart, and so that's where this came from. Yeah, and Jason from New Mexico has had great ideas, but they're a lot of work, and he uh, we're going to kind of slowly get to those. He was cool. He really wants us to. Do it. Do the Greasy Strangler. Uh, I don't know what the. Apparently, there's something weird about that movie that we'll try to probably get to in January. I think's the goal, uh, and that'll be part of the that bonus podcast then. But and then other episodes. He's suggested other movies. We got these VHS tapes to go through, which I, there's a porno on there. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Not the Ted Danson one, though. No. <laughs> so, Behind the green door. Yeah, we'll try to have some fun with these bonus podcasts. They're not going to be as structured and straightforward. They probably won't even be as long. Because let's be honest, the best podcast has to go for free, but this should just be more of you getting our personalities, whether you like us or <laughs> well, probably less, sorry. Probably less <laughs> fighting. I'd imagine it'll be more, uh, more agreeing or having fun, busting each other's balls. So. <laughs> Poor Josh. No, <laughs> no like, go on to any one of us at one point. I feel like I feel like he's going to turn into Eeyore during these bonus episodes. I don't know. At some point, Nobody we're going to have my movies. At some point, we're going to have Rocky versus Star Wars, and Sean's going to have to break one of our hearts. <laughs> but save it for when we get there. <laughs> He'll choose the correct one. <laughs> Give me Rocky. You can kill all the sequels, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> including Creed. I don't care. All right, big Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Big Indiana Jones. <laughs> big, but you if it know. had been one of the other Indiana Jones movies, I probably would have picked it. Uh, that one's kind of my least of the, th- of the original three. Really? Okay, okay, but it, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, big would take over that for me. So, and I I've been on record saying I like Tom Hanks big, and I want more t- big. T- yes. you know, I don't want him. Being in charge of a war. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't in charge of it. He was just the... You know what I mean. Yeah. I'm just bad at words. Uh, time for my heart to get broken. Finding Nemo or Rocky. Potentially. I, I, that's tough. That's a tough one. <laughs> I mean, it's Rocky for me. It's Finding Nemo for Josh. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? That is true. I'm assuming. It's one of your favorite movies of all time. Yeah, Rocky. Rocky's in the top 100. Finding mm-hmm. Nemo's in the top 20. Would you make the case for Finding Nemo for me or... We have done that, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if you're not going to defend your movie, I'm going to rock you then. <laughs> I have defended Finding Nemo on the show before. As, I love as, uh, Finding Nemo. <laughs> yeah. I've just defended Rocky a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, of course, we have the internet. There we go. Lethal Weapon or No Country for Old Men. <laughs> I mean, that's easy for me. No country for old men. Uh, it's going by my list. It's lethal weapon for me because I could watch that over and over again. as I, just I like kind of a throwaway. Weapon, we were talking about an actual work of art versus a, a fun movie. All right, but it's up to you get to decide as what you. It, yes, <laughs> it's more fun than artistic. That's fine. This is basically our own personal list translated into a group list, and therefore I would have to say lethal weapon because I've already done that math by myself. 
And for me, I would never think to put these movies against <laughs> each other. But I, I think Anton Sugar is... That's how you pronounce his name? Sugar, or Sugar? Yeah. I, I think that's the best bad guy of all time. And it's, when you have that... I, it's it's that, but I really do love Lethal Weapon more than I should. <laughs> this is fun for Josh. Batman, 1989, or Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. <laughs> Out of the gate. <laughs> I'll let you decide too. You can make. We wouldn't even. Sean, I don't even have to be a part of it. Whatever you choose wins. <laughs> Sticking to my list, it's Batman. The Two Towers is, is my least favorite of that trilogy, but it's still really darn good. Uh, some people prefer The Two Towers the same way they prefer Empire Strikes Back, and that. It's more of like a middle story, wars, blah, blah, blah. But Batman has just got so much history and nostalgia wrapped up in it for me. And I, I, I quote Jack Nicholson's Joker too, mu- too much, but it has to be Batman. Out of curiosity, Sean, what would you have picked? Batman. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Watchmen or the Blues Brothers? I don't really love either of those movies. Uh, Blues Brothers. Watchmen. I, I think I'm kind of with you. I'm, I like Blues Brothers okay, but I, I, I don't know. I, got in, I need to probably go back and revisit Watchmen. <laughs> we should have done it last week. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll make another Justice League movie and we can. <laughs> This one should be easy. The Born Identity or Fantastic Four, The Rise of the Silver Surfer. Yeah, that one's really easy. Born easy. Identity. <laughs> Silver Surfer it is. <laughs> <clears throat> Jaws, 1975, or Lady and the Tramp, 1955. Jaws. Jaws. Look Who's Talking To, <laughs> or The Matrix. <laughs> The Matrix. The Matrix. <laughs> Look who's talking to. <laughs> I don't like The Matrix at all. So you're legitimately choosing <laughs> Look Who's Talking To. I, 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 there's so many things going against it. One, I'm not a sci-fi guy. Two, I had a friend, enemy kind of guy. Was, we were just kind of starting to go separate paths. A friend of me. Named Tom Anderson. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, you've mentioned this. Uh, yeah. So that didn't help either. And then, I don't know. Just, Defend your choice. No, I don't like the do Matrix. Not. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm not neither. a case in favor of who's talking <laughs> I'm to. I'm neither here nor there. I'm like who's talking. <laughs> Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, or Spider-Man 2, the same Raimi. Oh, Spider-Man 2. Good question. <laughs> Spider-Man 2. I love when Josh has to pick the same Raimi movies. Yeah. Enemy of the State, 1998, or Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, 98. You know, I think I, as, I like Fear and Loathing a lot, but I think Enemy of the State is really underrated. So I'm going to take Enemy of the State. Oddly enough, I haven't seen either one of these 1998, I think, films. So I guess we will have to reset because I would. I'm with you. I think it's underrated, but I still think Fear and Loathing's better. Or it would be higher on my list, I guess. Zombie Land or Clueless? Clueless. I would go with Clueless as well. I would go with Zombie Land. Brokeback Mountain or Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers? Brokeback Mountain for me. The Two Towers. But I, Brokeback Mountain is a solid, if not slightly overrated for the hype, because <laughs> I saw it later film. <laughs> I'll go Brokeback Mountain as well. The Dark Knight or Serenity? Dark Knight. Dark Knight. I love Serenity, though. So much better than the show. This will be a close one. Citizen Kane or True Lies? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Citizen Kane. Indeed. Did Who directed True Lies? Was that Cameron? Cameron. Did you read that he almost beat up Harvey Weinstein at the Oscars? Or he's claiming he did? <laughs> they nearly got in a fight when Titanic won or something like that. And I kind of call bullshit on it, but... <laughs> <laughs> 
Kung Fu Panda or Hellboy 2? Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda. Kill Bill Volume 1 or A Bug's Life? Kill Bill. Kill Bill. Huh. Saw 2 or The Bridge on the River Kwai? Bridge on the River Kwai. Same. I agree. I love Saw 2. Dawn of the Dead 2004 or my big fat Greek wedding. <laughs> Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> he chose I, the Zack Snyder I, movie. I hate <laughs> I hate my big fat Greek. Uh, it's Dawn of the Dead for me as well. <sighs> me as well. <sighs> Let's get something that'll generate some conversation. <laughs> <laughs> You talk about how much I hate Nia Vardalos. You know? <laughs> Why do you hate her so much? Because she's Greek? Because she makes terrible movies. That movie did get a ton of buzz, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was an HBO production that went theatrical. Tom Hanks was behind and that. It never it came out of the theater. It was kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah. But there was nothing. Like 2002, I think it was, or 2003 in the spring. And around Valentine's Day, because I saw it on but Valentine's stayed Day. Stayed out there for like three it was months. It yeah. forever. Forever. And now, I never understood it. It I'm, never made any sense to me why anybody enjoyed it. And I don't really know anybody that connected to that movie. Uh, I don't. Maybe I liked it at I, first. It, it reminds me of country music, you know, that, that kind of thing that a lot of people can just like tolerate all, of, all at once. <laughs> it's, just, it's just so mediocre. That, it, that it, everybody can connect to it in some way. I, th- I think it had a lot to do with a burgeoning love for Greek food. At the, like literally the same time, I went to Greek Town in Chicago for the first time, like just a little bit before seeing that movie. And I, I mean, gosh, that's typical to say, but good lord, it just all of the things they were doing in that movie. I just kept tasting food in my mouth the entire time. It even overcame John Corbett, which is not an easy thing to do. <laughs> 28 Weeks Later or The Cable Guy? The Weeks is a sequel. Yeah. Yeah. I I have a weird appreciation for The Cable Guy. It's you know, just mostly mostly revisionism because I hated it the first time I saw it. Um, but not. I don't think I have enough of an appreciation for it, for it to say that it's better than the... What's the other movie? 28 Weeks Later. The sequel to 28 Days Later. Which is... A, I didn't hate that either. I didn't love it either. So kind of two, two relatively mediocre movies, I guess. I, Cable Guy's a better story. Uh, I'll go with 28 Weeks just because I don't think the Cable Guy quite gets there on its own. I think a lot of it comes from things I've brought to it as opposed to the actual film. Yeah, I'll go with the Cable Guy because running zombies really pissed me off. Like, the first one's structured well. It's a Danny Boyle film, so I'm, I'm attracted to his filmmaking style most of the time. Uh then the second one and it's just way too many running zombies and it started to turn me off like wait a minute hold on a second no no no, no, no. i don't understand it so the cable guy not because it's good because it's like less crappy lesser of two weevils <laughs> got a coin <laughs> uh, i guess i'll go with the cable guy too just only because it's so much worse than 28 days later uh I haven't seen one of the or either of these, so you guys might have to go on your own. El Norte, nineteen eighty three, and October Sky. I mean, I, I I can't even. I mean, I know both those movies, but I mean, I think we should just skip that one. All right, yeah, we will skip, skip that one. Wayne's World or The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Wayne's World. Wayne's World. I agree. Although Benjamin Button is a very well made movie. <laughs> of course it is. Yeah, I, I'll apologize for David Fincher all day long. <laughs> Step Brothers or Quantum of Solace? Oh, wow. This is, oh, this this is all so down to Sean, too, because oh I'm going God. Step Brothers. Because <laughs> I hate both of those movies so much. <laughs> which and I'm one, assuming you're Quantum of Solace, I right, hate? Josh? Which one do I hate less? Uh, I probably hate Step Brothers less. Wow. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Who the Avengers or Shakespeare in Love? Shakespeare in Love. Shakespeare in Love. I concur. 
Only Lovers Left Alive, 2013. I haven't seen that it's one. It's the vampire Jim right. Jarmusch film, I think, right? That I never watched. And then Step Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you give us another one other than... The vampire one? Yeah. Oh, Step Brothers is probably going to lose Big Fish or Step Brothers. Step Brothers, actually. I hate Big Fish as well. I'm going Big Fish. Big Fish. <laughs> Forced to pick Step Brothers twice on this show. What the hell is wrong with the world? <laughs> Scary movie or The Hunt for Red October? Ooh, that's a tough one. Hunt for Red October. It is? <laughs> <Pretty> good. <laughs> but I, I, I really like Scary Movie. I think it's funny. Yeah, I mean, like, if I can't, if I'm going to sit here and say, you can't say what's funny, what isn't funny, I can't say it's not I, funny. I laughed a lot at Scary Movie. I went out and bought Scary Movie after I saw it. I didn't laugh at all. <laughs> I, Scary it, movie is funny because it's the Brett Zucker stuff. It, still, it hit me right that 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 perfect spot right after right after Scream. It was just right. It was but the timing of it was Scream so already did it kind of. It was like a parody of a parody almost. I don't know. I, Hunt I, for Red October is my choice by a <laughs> mile. I I really like that even with Sean Connery not bothering to be Russian. But he ate food so well. Jason from Mexico <laughs> probably hates it. <laughs> I think, well, Alec Baldwin is so much of a lesser Jack Ryan to me, though. <sighs> That's I mean, another one of those things. That Ford, they... And even Chris Pine is a far better Jack Ryan to me. Even Fat Affleck's a better Jack Ryan to me than, than well, Baldwin. That's the thing is. is, I generally hate the Jack Ryan movies. <laughs> I just like. I like all of them. Like and then John Krasinski's Mostly. going to be playing him on Amazon, so I don't even know what to do with that. Uh, <sighs> scary movie. We already chose anyway, but <laughs> Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, nineteen thirty seven, or you've got mail. Snow White. Snow White. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's favorite movie. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind you've got mail. <laughs> Ex Machina or the Aviator. Ex Machina. Agreed. Far and away. Far okay. and away is a choice? I, nope. I hate the that. <laughs> 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 The Aviator is one of the longest, sh- like, non-long, long films I've ever seen. Because it's not three hours, but it feels like five and a half hours. Oh, I liked it. It's yeah, fine. It's there was a handful of Scorsese movies. I just, eh. That was him, right? That, yep. and I didn't like Gangs of New York that much yeah, either. Yeah. Robin Hood, Men in Tights, or Road Trip? I think it's Road Trip. I kind for of have a me. strange appreciation for both of those movies, but I guess I guess Robin Hood Men in Tights makes me laugh more. <laughs> Robin Hood Men in Tights, the Dave Chappelle role kind of puts it <laughs> over the edge for me. <laughs> Robin Hood Men in Tights or Gangs of New York. <laughs> <laughs> Robin Hood it is. I, I got for Carrie always twice during this show. Gangs of New York. I gotta go Gangs of New York, even though I just said I don't like it. It's not that I I don't know. I don't like it as much as other Scorsese movies. There's something about Mary or Hulk, 2003. There's something about Mary. Hulk. There's something about Mary. We've done this one on the podcast before. (laughs) This should be easy. Babe or Boondock Saints. Uh, Babe. (laughs) Babe. (laughs) Unquestionably. (laughs) Fuck Boondock Saints. The World's End or The Blues Brothers. (sighs) <laughs> Two movies again. I just don't care about. Uh, I've never seen The World's End, so uh, the Blues Brothers, I guess. World's End. Uh, it, so it's they, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Torn, sorry. <laughs> Back to the Future Part Three or the Born Supremacy? Born Supremacy. Born Supremacy. Three Ten to Yuma or Step Brothers? Three Ten to Yuma. <laughs> 310 to you, man. Yeah. Ooh. Chasing Amy or Phone Booth? Chasing Amy. Chasing Amy. Chasing Amy is the number two movie. <laughs> Makes sense. Just based on what we've... Casablanca doesn't pop up here a lot. <laughs> Dude, Where's My Car or The Nightmare Before Christmas? Nightmare Before Christmas. Nightmare Before Christmas. I agree. <laughs> if I don't say anything, I'm, and you guys said the same thing, I'm just agreeing. If I disagree, I'll say it. Uh, Born Identity or Hollow Man? Born Identity. <laughs> Born Identity. Hollow I Man. I remember what Hollow Man oh, was. Kevin Bacon and Paul Verhoeven. Awful. Ugh. Awful movie. 
And, he's not and, hollow. It, he's invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Bacon's invisible penis. Yes. Oh, ah, why? Uh, he likes to show it, whether it's really visible does. or not. Wild things. Yeah. Why was he in planes, trains, and automobiles? By the way, what the hell did they? He had a John Hughes that? connection um, because the very next year he they made, made a she's having a baby yeah, but, with him. So unnecessary. Rain over me. Or twenty eight weeks later, you know, honestly, I, I, I don't think Great Over Me is a is a great movie at all. But Sandler's performance in it is actually really great, and so I'll go with that one. I haven't seen Rain Over Me. Um, I'd go Rain Over Me as well. Same thing. I think he's really good in it. That was a tough RoboCop or Almost Famous. <laughs> Which Almost RoboCop? Famous. Are you fucking kidding me? No, seriously. Eighty seven. You would pick any of these RoboCops over almost famous. Okay, I, I know. I'm sorry. I didn't hear the second one. Okay. I was oh. focused on which RoboCop because you've been saying the years. And yeah. so almost famous is the clear choice here. I hate 1987's RoboCop. Is there a RoboCop that could beat almost famous? No. I should be quiet. <laughs> uh, Kill Bill Volume 2 or Traffic? Kill Bill. Kill Bill. I agree. Singing in the Rain or Kill Bill Volume 1? Kill Bill. Singing in the Rain. I'm going to go Kill Bill as well. Ocean's 13 or Chasing Amy? Chasing Amy. Chasing Amy. Chasing Amy. The Simpsons movie or Cinderella 1950? Simpsons movie. Simpsons. Thank You for Smoking or The Shining? That is actually pretty tough. What do you think about it? Those are two really great movies. One of them's obviously a, a well-remembered classic. The other one is a very underrated movie. Um, I'll actually go thank you for smoking. I will go with The Shining. Aaron Eckhart bugs me. Yeah, I'll go with The Shining, but I'm, I really like Thank You for Smoking. Gremlins or Monsters, Inc.? Monsters, Inc. Monsters, Inc. I agree. Days Confused or Gladiator? Dazed and Confused. Dazed and Confused. <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard, I guess. <laughs> well, I'm kind of with you, too. I really wouldn't. If you would have said Gladiator, I'd have been like, fuck. <laughs> <clears throat> right now, it's loading, and it says everything is awesome. <laughs> Spider-Man 2 or Blades of Glory? Spider-Man 2. Yes. The agreed. Raimi one. The lead of Extraordinary Gentleman or Office Space? <laughs> office, office Space. space. <laughs> 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 That's another one. Uh, lead of Extraordinary Gentleman, and they shorten it down to this acronym that doesn't make a damn bit of sense. It's like <laughs> Independence Day becomes ID4. For some reason, the marketing department thought that that would give them more ticket sales or, or what? It was LXG. LXG. Yeah. What really in the hell does that mean? <laughs> it really bothered me. Like, it's like hitting nine ninety nine at the gas station. You know, I need the ten dollars <laughs> on there. <laughs> See, again, you either like our personalities or you don't, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Twilight or the Shawshank Redemption? <laughs> Shawshank. Uh, I'm going to say Shawshank Redemption, but also admit that I have a song that I really, really love and I discovered last year uh, just from flipping through on Spotify. Had no idea where it was from. It didn't have like a jacket that said anything to do with it. As it turns out, it was in a Twilight movie. <laughs> I had no idea, and and that makes me. V- it, it, I'm glad I discovered. Question it. the song. <laughs> it's still wonderful to me, but it does make me wonder, like, why would you give it to that? Because then your choices are poor. I don't know. Maybe you <laughs> needed money. I don't know. Sparkling vampires. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't. I just know that it doesn't reflect their relationship in the What's movie. The you know, I, I, I'm not gonna. It's, it's a personal choice because then I. <laughs> we, I, I you know that it's know probably it. sappy and cheesy. We'll just I go. Probably with that. wouldn't even know what it is. <laughs> I posted it on my Facebook page last oh, year so I gotta go right find around it. that time. So well, I guess I'll go with Shawshank as well. 
Dead Air. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible movie. Yeah. I will say Lady Bird had a lot of Dave Matthews Band in it. And I oh. hate, hate, hate oh. the Dave Matthews Band. I wish band. you guys had said that before. <laughs> but it's... I, don't, I would have been so the guy in the car. <laughs> yeah. he, they didn't do the score or anything, did they? It's just no, no, no. It's it just one song. Okay, just twice. Did you see by the way that they actually published the the letters that Greta Gerwig sent to Dave Matthews and to Justin Timberlake, asking if she could use those songs because those were the songs that she listened to in uh, 2003 when, more set when the movie was set, and uh, she sent them letters, and they're just beautiful. They're just just these lovely personal fan letters. Uh, you know, it's just so wonderful how humble she is, despite oh. being a fucking genius. Sure, back in 2003, when I was a genius as well, I sent a, uh, <laughs> a two separate emails in the same day. One to Arthur C. Clarke, uh, asking to adapt a film, a book of his, into a screenplay, not knowing how this works at all. <laughs> <laughs> and also to Brian McKnight, the uh, R&B artist, asking him to perform at my wedding later that year. <laughs> Needless to say, I did not get a response from either of them, but I was very humble and thanked them for their contributions to my life. Yeah. I've, I've never written a, a fan letter. Have you ever written a fan letter? No, I was a kid. I wrote Frank Thomas and Joe Montana. Yeah. Like in third grade, we had to. Uh, so I had to, like, and then yeah. Joe Montana sent me something back. I wrote uh, <laughs> Daryl Strawberry and Ryan Sandberg and included a card with both of them for him to sign. Uh, Strawberry probably rolled it up to snort with, and Sandberg, <laughs> who wow. never answered fan mail because he started to get a lot of it, I think. He wasn't that personal of a guy anyways. I, I made that up later. but My third grade teacher forced all of us to write to Ronald Reagan. Oh. I, don't even, I think we all wrote the same form letter. <laughs> but I, I don't know. Some I poor, don't remember what I wrote to him, but it was not a fan letter. <laughs> some poor woman at the uh, White House mail room had to go through all of these and send all of you a stock letter from the president. <laughs> I think they just sent one to the class because we sent them all at the same oh, time. Yeah, yeah. So they sent like some form thing back to the entire class. The teacher kept it, I think. We had to write the colleges in eighth grade, and I got a handwritten letter back from the Notre Dame baseball coach. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Inviting me to their... Uh, Baseball camp. Well, that's very cool. <laughs> and then I, my grades weren't very good. <laughs> and I was only an okay baby. I was a home run hitter, and that was it. Uh, uh, speaking of songs, uh, have you noticed the the Jack Black versus Chris Hemsworth immigrant song battle they're having on <laughs> Instagram? No. Because Jack Black got Led Zeppelin to let him use an uh, immigrant song in School of Rock, which is like the first time Led Zeppelin ever let anybody use music in a movie. And then they well, used what, it in Thor. What about uh, Almost Famous, though? That was prior to School of Rock. It was right around this. I don't remember. It, right around. Okay. They weren't okay. letting. They, Cameron Crowe went out on tour. With Led Zeppelin. That movie was about Led Zeppelin in a lot yes. of ways. So between those, they rarely did that. And so they were making a big deal. And I guess apparently, and I... I haven't really done the research, but it was Eli Roth, Kate Blanchett, and Jack Black are like making a movie together, <laughs> which I thought Sean would enjoy. They were having a like a pretend fight while the immigrant song played on Instagram, <laughs> and they were calling it "School of Ragnar Roth." <laughs> <laughs> so Kate Blanchett and Eli Roth in a movie together. I don't. That would be amazing, just for the podcast alone. <laughs> 310 to Yuma, 2007, or 10 Things I Hate About You? I love 10 Things, but uh, I mean, 310 to Yuma is an all-time great. Agreed. Those damn westerns that suck so bad. <laughs> Ferris Bueller's Day Off or Young Frankenstein? I love Ferris Bueller, but uh, again, Young Frankenstein is kind of one of those all-time great movies. It, it's something I haven't seen. I haven't seen any either, so I guess I'll let John take Ferris. Or what'd you say? Uh, Young Frankenstein. Frankenstein, that's what I'll pick. Mary Poppins, 1964, or The Incredibles, 2004? Incredibles. Incredibles. (laughs) This is why it's a bonus podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'll go for a few more minutes, and then we can call it a day. If this ever loads... (laughs) X-Men 2000 or Ace Ventura Pet Detective? 
X Men, just because love the Ace Ventura is such a low humor. Which is why I'm going to choose Ace Ventura. <laughs> X Men is such a setup film. It's so not everything, a movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, everything is like this is the person's name, also known as, for like an hour and a half, and then they have a big battle scene and it's over. So. Ace Ventura. I still enjoy the scenes of him. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. And yeah. would you like a mint? Perhaps some banaka and laces out? And yeah. Yeah. For the football stuff alone, I'll go with Ace Ventura. Constantine or Tropic Thunder? Tropic Thunder. Constantine. Tropic Thunder. Terminator Salvation or Anger Management? Oh, Terminator Salvation. Anger Management. <laughs> I, I hate... Yes! I hate Anger Management. <laughs> I'll go with Anger Management. <laughs> oh, God. Adam Sandler at his, at his loudest. Ugh. Scream 2 or Donnie Darko? Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko. Although Scream 2 is my favorite of those films. Quite good. Casino Royale 2006 or Full Metal Jacket? Full Metal Jacket. Oh! <laughs> Oh, man. Favorite Bond film or an amazing movie? I mean, yeah. Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny you didn't. You just said favorite Bond film, not favorite Bond film that's also an amazing movie. It's just, well, okay, it's just no, a no. Bond movie. <laughs> I actually do think Casino Royale is a really good movie. <laughs> you can't say amazing. <laughs> you, won't, you won't say it. Well, because if I do, then I'll be asked to say why. <laughs> I don't think I can do that. <laughs> the Game or The Truman Show? Truman Show. Um, the Game is oh, close, boy. but it just doesn't yeah. quite you know, get there. I don't <sighs> like The Game, actually. I do and own it, and but it has to be The Truman Show. There's just I something just, about that. I connect more to The Truman Show emotionally. Uh, well, then why call it the game if that's going to be your big twist? <laughs> I mean, that kind of pisses me off. <laughs> I mean, oh, ooh, wow, wow <laughs> mind blown. Oh, it is like, wow, that's true. It's right there. <laughs> the episode where Bob called the adventure hack. Bob just pulled, pulled the string on that movie. I know. That, as much as I'll defend Hat Fincher on anything else, that's the one movie just like. This is a game. This is, at no point did I not think it was a game. <laughs> <sighs> I apologize. <laughs> it looks great, though. Yes. It is great looking, yes. <laughs> Sorry. A Christmas Story or Grease? Which one is a Christmas story? Oh, the one that's played over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Do a live version. and We're going to see it about 15 times a day <laughs> coming up here. <laughs> Um, no way would I choose Greece ever, ever. Like you'd really have to scrape the bottom of the barrel. I hate Greece to get the so grease much. off the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there you have it. So Bob, where are you? I don't really like either one of these movies. If I'm being honest. I'm, I'm with you. I don't like either one of them really all that much. I think Greece is just a little bit better because a Christmas story is too exposed. I'm just so sick of a Christmas story. Yeah. Uh, and Josh said I hate musicals so I'll just pick Grease <laughs> just to go against type <laughs> I don't think I might like him better than Josh does I like Chicago <laughs> well if they're good I like them it's just then usually not All right, every Indiana Jones movie or Alien <laughs> it's actually Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but it makes it more fun if it's the other Indiana Jones movies. If you make my head explode, it's more fun. I, see. I, w- I would take Alien over Crystal Skull. I would as well, but if you ask me which franchise do I like better, I'm going to say Alien would you over say? Indiana Jones. Although I like Raiders of the Lost Ark better than Alien. That is quite a lot of mental geography there. <laughs> Welcome to my day. <laughs> yeah, really, if you I really only like two of each, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> uh, save the last dance of Cloverfield. 
Cloverfield, though I do love Save the Last Dance. I think it's a terrific movie. I do not. Um, that MTV, MTV Films production and could have been so much better than... She's it, such a great actress, though. Well, and, and she and him had really great chemistry together. They do. It just it turns out to be like very typical. It's not a well-made film. It doesn't take advantage of how talented their leads were. It had a great Casey and JoJo song in it, though. I do uh, worry, like... You saw the way her career fell off. I worry that maybe it was because she just didn't want to be around Hollywood people. Like, she has one of those stories, I bet. Yeah, probably. Like an Annabella Sciorra, who's who, the talent just never got to where it was because she just left because she didn't want to be harassed anymore. I could see that happening to her. She was so talented, yeah. and then she disappears, and there's got to be a reason why, and I'm betting she's got one of those Me Too stories coming. I wouldn't doubt that for a moment. She's also very, very bright. Like a lot of actors in Hollywood are also very bright people that have been at the top of their game for a long time. But she, I remember reading that she has interests that are completely not involved. And maybe that, hopefully, Hollywood. that's it. I would prefer it to be that she just had more interest in oh, yeah. 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 movies for sure. I just worry that it's the other thing because that's just coming out more and off, more often than not. Yeah. What was the other movie, anyways? I forgot. Cloverfield. Cloverfield. Which we <laughs> all picked. But I, I guess I'm kind of with Sean. I think their chemistry does shine through the MTV-ness of it. But, yeah. There's something about Mary or Forrest Gump, Josh. Because <laughs> we know where we're at on that one. Well, we already know the winner, but I'm just curious what you're going to say. <laughs> something about Mary. Yes. <laughs> Forrest Gump fails again. Is there anything that you could, uh, aside from Crash versus Forrest Gump, is there anything that Forrest Gump could beat? Could it beat oh, Event shoot. Horizon? Yes. I mean, I would, I'd take Forrest Gump over, uh, over Hostel and Hostel 2. I wouldn't uh, take it over Hostel. I'd take Forrest Gump over Grease. I would, take, I would maybe take it over most of Sandler's stuff. It'd be close. <laughs> it, would be, it would depend yeah, on the like that might stuff. be that might be the w- rare case where I pick Happy Gilmore. <laughs> I would, yeah. yeah. I really do hate Forrest Gump a lot. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End or Platoon? Platoon. Platoon. <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, or Predator? The problem I have with the with the Pirates movie is I can never remember which movie I like. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the first one, Curse of the Black The first Pearl. one and the last one. I really liked the last one that they okay. made. I did. I thought that was a pretty good movie. Which, so this is what? Predator or the devil, Dead Man's Chest. Which is two. Oh, then definitely Predator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, Dead Man's Chest is like, oh my God. It's so long. <laughs> Somebody get me a sedative. <laughs> it's so goddamn long. But yeah, Predators, as I there's, called there's it, the best action three film in of all the middle. time. Those three Pirates movies in the middle are just endless. Sean just saved Josh again from saying Predator is the best action movie of all time. <laughs> no, you didn't save me from it. I said it. I know, but he kept talking while you said it, so it kind of <laughs> went under the radar. <laughs> <laughs> Say a loud and proud. Die hard, then. <laughs> Man, I mean, he's got a good point. They, <laughs> their body armor is literally their body. <laughs> it's their muscles. And it's, uh. <laughs> I tried to defend that st- stance in June, and it just didn't hit with either of you. I, I like Predator for what it is, but I can't. In good conscience, put it as the best action movie no. of all time. Not, not in a world where there's Die Hard. <laughs> Die Hard is it's in the f- top or five. Lethal it's in the conversation. Even Rambo Two. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all right. Well, then I'm done trying to defend. But you guys are in a whole different hemisphere. <laughs> well, I mean, he gets shot and he doesn't blow up like everybody else does. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, Rambo. That's a good point too. <laughs> Oh, no, I said Rambo 2. Oh, right. <laughs> we're, we're not even to first blood. <laughs> All right, last one. There's something about Mary or Wally. <laughs> the rare oh. occasion where I won't pick uh, there's something about Mary. It's Wally. Wally indeed. I may have to make jo- Josh happy to end the show. <laughs> 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 no, we don't have to do that. It just happened to work out that <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Uh, but if you like this or had found us or had any ideas, especially if you're a Patreon supporter, you know, shoot them our way and we'll try to do this once a month and 
spin up bonus episodes because they're fun for us to do. And as long as you're liking them, if you don't, if they suck, let us know too. But uh, I guess that's all we got. Anything else before we wrap it up? If you want to be a supporter, I hate critics.net slash Patreon. As little as a dollar a month and you get this episode. I'm not sure how you'll get it yet. I think uh, it'll be through the, I think I sent out an email through Patreon maybe. Or if I put it on Bandcamp, there'll be a code. We'll see. But uh, let us know what you think. And starting next, or maybe starting in January, these will start being for Patreon only. Uh, Otherwise, we'll see you later. Bye.